I've been working with React Native a bunch lately, and I'm really excited about it. In particular, I created this local AI-based restaurant search React Native application for my talk at Chain React. And in building that app, I found this really handy way that React Native devs handle misbehaving NPM packages. They would be really handy for React web devs to know. Now, I work in both SSR and SPA worlds in the web, and sometimes I find that a package works really well in client-side only spas, but not in server-side rendered applications because it uses window or document or local storage without actually checking if it's on the client. It's super frustrating. So you got a couple of options when that happens. You can go and find a different package that does play nicely with SSR, but that might not exist. Or I can fork it and then fix it in my fork, but then I have to maintain the code and I could PR the fix, but then it might not get accepted or it might take a while. Now, React Native devs have a really interesting solution for this. And while initially I was like, oh, this is gnarly. We should never do this. I've actually been thinking recently, is that not such a bad idea? And maybe we should try it out on the website when it comes to these misbehaving NPM libs. Because I'm really sick and tired of finding a good graphing or mapping or whatever kind of client-side heavy library and not being able to use it because of one bad line of code. But before I get into showing you this amazing workaround from the world of React Native, I want to talk about this week's sponsor, and that's Infinite Red. Infinite Red is a React Native expert consultancy that has been helping small, medium, and big companies like Zoom, Mercari, BlueJeans, Domino's, and more build their React Native applications. I wouldn't be recommending these folks if I didn't personally like them and like working with them. They're not just great engineers who really understand React and React Native, but they've been part of the React Native world from the start. Every year, Infinite Red runs the Chain React Conference right here in my hometown of Portland, Oregon. It's a great conference for React Native devs, and I was really honored to give a talk there this year. They also build the Ignite framework that provides all the missing pieces of architecture from the React Native core, a solid navigation system, IE10N, API access, and all the stuff that you need to build a really complete and solid applications. And they're doing some amazing stuff in the native AI space by building wrappers around ML kits so you can leverage the native AI in your React Native apps. That's that kind of ahead of the game thinking and development, which is why I love working with Infinite Red. So a huge thank you to Infinite Red for sponsoring this video and this channel. Now let's get into learning this really cool React Native hack. All right, so I've got this really tempting Jahur bad library that I want to bring into my Vite app. So the first thing I need to do is create that Vite app, or we call it Vite test, and we'll use the React TS template. Now I'll bring that up in VS Code. Okay, in that Vite test directory, I'm going to add my Jahur bad library, <laughs> and then I'm going to go over to my app.tsx file. I'm going to bring in that bad component and run it. Okay, let's give it a go. All right, I'll jump over to 5173, and we can see that we got our bad component. And what does bad component do? Well, it's a button incrementer sort of thing, but if you refresh, then you get the same count. So what it's doing is bad component's actually hitting local storage and storing the count from the last time, and yeah, so eh, whatever. Anyway, it just shows that it's using local resources on the client, which is okay if you wrap them appropriately when you're doing SSR. So now let's try this out in SSR and see it go sideways. So to do that, I'm going to go back up into the main directory. And I'm going to create first an app router test. I'll use TypeScript. I'm not going to use Tailwind. Source directory, yes. And there you go. And then I'll use npm to install. Now I'm using npm instead of pmpm because the hack that I'm going to use is compatible with npm and yarn, but not pmpm, sadly. Oh, well, bad pack. Next, I'll bring in my bad package. And I'll use npm for that. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to go get the code from vtest. That should work, right? Okay, we'll bring it back down here into our app. Cool. Let's save. And then inside the app router test, I'll run dev. 
All right. Now we get an issue around fail to compile. That's because in bad library, it's just straight TypeScript. So we need to transpile that. So that's just a configuration option on the next config. Let's do that. Transpile. We'll do Jahar bad library. And now if I look at the console, ooh, all right, well, let's see. Okay, so now we're getting this local storage is not defined. All right, so what's happening? All right, well, let's go take a look at the code behind Jahar bad library. So in there, so this janky little component is basically a counter. And the trick here is that we're initializing the state using local storage. Now, that initialization is going to run during server-side rendering time. And there's no local storage, there's no window, there's no document. So that's why local storage is gonna blow up at that point. So that's not great. So how do I fix this? Well, if I really wanted to use this bad component, I could go in and just literally change the code right here in node modules, right? Ugh. Okay, well, let's give it a go, let's try it out. Well, to start off, I'll just set that to zero by default. And then I'll add another use effect that runs after the first render. So this is only going to run on the client because use effects only run the client. And uh, yeah, okay. So one, and then one more thing. Let's go and just check to make sure I don't set the item without it having a value. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'll go back to my app router test, run it again. And now I get a different error. I get that use state only works in client components. Okay, fine. That's an app router specific thing because we're in an RSC there. So let's go and fix that by adding use client and yay there we go now it works hit refresh and everything works great okay awesome so now it works great but what happens the next time i do an npmi or what happens when another developer with this same code base does an npmi they're going to get the old version that didn't have my patch so how do i enforce that patch how do i make that patch part of my project well, I can use the patch package library. So what patch package does is it formalizes a way of patching a package after it's been installed. So let's give it a try. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to npm install patch package. Then I'm gonna go back over here and we can see that we want to do a post install patch package inside of scripts. So let's go and add that to our package JSON. And now the next thing we want to do is actually tell it to patch that package. So I'm going to do mpx patch package, and then I'm going to give it the name of the library. All right, that's going to create a local file in patches. You can actually see it over here, and it actually shows you the changes between the original version with the local storage and the new version that I want that has the use effect changes. All right, let's give this a go. So the way that I test this is I would remove node modules, and then do an MPMI. And then we can see at the end that we get this new applying patches. So you got Jahur bad library 102 there. And now we can do MPM run dev or PMPM dev as I please. And it still works. So let's apply those changes after those packages have been installed, which is really cool. This means that I can now go and check that code into GitHub, share it with other developers, and then when they do their install, it's automatically going to add those patches. And this is something that they do in the React Native community a lot because they find that there's NPM libraries out there that work well on the web or in other contexts, but not in the React Native context. So they have to make the similar kind of changes. All right, let's try it out again in pages to make sure that that works. So again, it'll be the PMPM create React app, but this time I'll say pages test. Of course, all this code available to you for free on GitHub and a link in the description right down below. I'm not gonna use Tailwind and I'm not gonna use the app router in this case. So there we go, pages. And I'll just go and make some of the similar changes. I'm gonna go and add that transpile to our next config. And then I'm gonna add that library. I'll go make the CSS changes and all that fun stuff. I'll use that same code in my index. All right, cool. So this shouldn't work. Let's take a look. All right, so we're getting our local storage not defined. Let's now go make that change. So again, I'm gonna bring up node modules, Jahur, bad library. I'm gonna bring up my implementation. 
change it out for my new one that has the use effects in it. That looks good. Now I'll head over back to my code and I'll run dev again. And we see that it works. That's really cool. It even has the same local storage from before because it's still local as 3000. Cute. Okay, now cool. Let's get into our patch package. But this time I'm going to add on create issue. So what create issue does is we'll see in a second. So it creates that package. And then it also brings up my browser and creates an issue with the original repo with all my changes. How cool is that? So this gives the original author of the library all the insights that they need. And in fact, replacement code that fixes the issue. So that's just really great. All right. So I hope this helps you get around that issue where you have that library that you really want to use. But unfortunately, it's just not compatible with server side rendering. You can go in, you can make your changes, you can create a patch. It's a good, solid in place patch that's automatically installed for you. It's just a really nice workaround when it comes to that particular problem. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.